Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com and I am here with an unboxing and a sniff test of a new device that came in the mail. Well, I haven't even opened it yet. Who is it from? It is from shipping department. Data color. Yep, data color. So let me get out my trusty knifey knife right here. Let's open up this package ever so carefully and see what we have in here. My eye itches. Do not use, remember, do not use a knife to itch your eye. That would be a bad thing. So we have static free, whatever this stuff is. <clears throat> That's right, take that. And what do we have in here? We have a Spider 3 Elite. I don't know much about the Spider 3 Elite, but I know a lot about, well not a lot, but I've heard about Spider. How many of you people out there have asked, do I um, color calibrate my monitor or my screen? And how many people out there ask yourself, do you color calibrate your screen? We know that it's important to color calibrate your screen, and I personally haven't done that ever. You know, it's just my thing. I haven't done it. And my reasoning was, well, you know, 99.97% of the people in the world don't have color calibrated monitors, so my you know, if I was color calibrated and they weren't, it wouldn't really matter. But what it comes down to pretty much is that if you do a lot of your own printing, you print at home using your inkjet, you print at labs that have um, different profiles available, well, it's kind of important that you color calibrate. So I'm gonna test out this Elite 3 and tell you what I think about it and talk about the other spider system, you know, the other spider readers, because I know there's less expensive ones. I don't know how much this one is, Oh, it smells like Upper Deck 1989 Ken Griffey Jr. card. It really does. It smells like 1989 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, which was a good card back in the day. But, so, you, why do you do this? Why do you color calibrate? You color calibrate because you don't want to waste printing. You don't want to waste ink when you're printing with your inkjet printer. Um, there's companies out there that have profiles that match your printer to your monitor. So when you color calibrate with this to your monitor, you can set a profile that's exactly the one to your printer so that what you see on your monitor is what you're going to get in your printer. That's important. Or if you order from a place like Adoramapix, they have profiles that you can set your monitor that are calibrated to their machines when they make their photo books or they make their um, any prints that you want. So that's really important. I need to do it because I want to, you know, see what my, the exact density, the exact color. I want my prints to look like the way that I edited them on the screen. So I'm going to have a full review of this coming up because it's important that we look at this, see what the options are out there and, you know, basically basically start to use one of these. And I will let you know that they talk about there's a professional editing editing environment and an amateur edit, editing environment. I'm in an amateur editing environment. And what that means is I've got lights coming from all over the place that are interfering and changing with uh, where I edit my pictures because I don't have a black room with a daylight bulb and all of this type of stuff, which is the ideal editing space. But most of us don't have ideal editing spaces. And I will tell you that the Spider does have built in an ambient light reading system so that it can you know, uh, calibrate your screen based on your situation. So this is the Spider 3 from Data Color. Uh, it just came. I'm going to test it out. But it is important that you do color calibrate your screen. And we're going to see how important it is when I test it out to basically see what I've been editing and how the results have been versus how it's going to look with this color calibration system. Um, and that's about it. So Spider 3, Jared Polin, Fro Nose Photo dot com. See ya!